Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Yada Yada Radio. My pleasure to be uh, with you. We've got uh, JB and Kirk uh, here uh, with us this evening. I hope that uh, the Larry and Ader will call in before uh, before too long. How are you, fellas? Just fine. Uh, Doing good. good. I'll keep an eye on the call log and see if I see his name show up. Okay. Uh, there's a couple items that are interesting in the news. We've been talking in the chat room about the Egypt Air plane, the uh, Airbus A320, that uh, did a, uh, a nosedive into the Mediterranean. And there was uh, you know, speculation that, uh, of course, the defense minister, the aviation minister of the Egyptian uh, aviation ministry, uh, said that it uh, had to be uh, terrorism. That's uh, pretty uh, Aggressive of him, since uh, we know absolutely nothing about what happened thus far at that uh, airplane. You know, there are, there are three basic options here. One is the, the single common denominator in uh, most A320 crashes is uh, tail rudder problems. And uh, it's what has caused, is brought down three before it. And this airplane uh, veered 90 degrees uh, left to 37,000 feet and then did a 360 to the right. The things that would cause that are a rudder malfunction. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know that. I just tell you that is, that up to this point, that's been the common denominator. Uh, the second option is, of course, pilot suicide. Uh, both uh, pilots uh, and the head of the flight crew were uh, named Mohammed. Uh, but the pilot uh, certainly was not, a, uh, was not a Muslim Brotherhood sympathizer. He posted articles in opposition to them and pro CC. Uh, to be pro CC, you have to be an absolute nincompoop. But nonetheless, he uh, he uh, did. Uh, <coughs> pilot suicide is not likely in this case, considering the uh, the online presence of the pilot. Um, and uh, of course, that would leave you with uh, an act of terrorism. But uh, you know, that's boy, that is far fetched. First of all, there's no one who's claiming to have brought the airplane down. If it was the Muslim Brotherhood, if it was the Islamic State, they would have been all over it like uh, a Muslim on a terror. But eh, there's no indication that they did so. And, and if you were a uh, going to bring an airplane down, wouldn't you try to do it in a way that would make a bigger splash, so to speak, that have an airplane simply fly, fall out of the sky for absolutely no reason in the mid of, middle of the Mediterranean Sea? So what do you think, uh, fellas? I think it's pretty reasonable to me. I mean, uh, you're uh, about your expertise on the uh, rudders and stuff, but I wouldn't have a clue. But uh, they, uh, <laughs> it would make sense if they would try to blow it up where there's a bigger population if they were going to do yeah. that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I can tell you one thing. that the uh, Egyptian tourist industry, which, you know, I've been through Egypt. I've seen uh, I mean, everything that's worth seeing in Egypt was created... Uh, uh, by the pharaohs in, uh, in ancient Egypt, and the Muslims have simply destroyed the place ever since then. And now that I know Yahweh, I would never go there to, uh, to see the, the uh, religious heritage of ancient Egypt. And now that I know Islam, I would never go there because of Islam. But, but the fact of the matter is that in Egypt, uh, tourism, which was their, the lifeblood of their economy, uh, is uh, is shuttered um, after the the airplane was uh, destroyed that had the Russian tourists about uh, six nine months ago. Uh, there was just nobody going to Egypt. And you know, I mean, tell me, would you, could you be in your right mind and board in a, an airplane flown by a Muslim? No, I, mean, I wouldn't. No, no, no not likely. No, no. Uh, insane. No, thinking of insane. Okay, fellas. Uh, I read an article that was published in the Washington Post yesterday, uh, a comprehensive uh, review of federal documentation was just uh, concluded, and there is a new number one cause of our number one expense in the uh, uh, nation's health care uh, budget. Uh, for years, uh, the big three had been... Um, in this order, number one had been accidents, primarily automobile accidents. Number two had been uh, heart uh, conditions. And number three, in terms of the big three most expensive health care costs in America, number three had been um, cancer. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so with those as the big three, there is a new number one that is far and away the most expensive uh, health care item in America. What do you guys think it is? Dr. Hera, hospitals, disease. Pardon? Oh no, that's, 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 that's the next. That's the next thing I want to talk about is uh, is the is what is the largest cause of death, and you've already you've already answered that question, so you've you've ruined that part of the. Uh, I don't the show. Show. No, I'm just uh, I'm just talking. What is the most expensive? What thing do we spend the most money on in terms of health care now in America? I gave you a transgender three. operations. Nope, 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 nope. That's uh, Despite oh, the other way. ones in terms of having yeah. um, uh, bathrooms by uh, sexual preference, uh, transgender Americans total less than one one hundredth of one percent that, of that's the population. I, I know. I'm, yeah. it, 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 I was kidding. Yes. I know you. What do you think? Uh, about medical, gosh, I don't know. Medical insurance. Mm-mm. Number one cost. Biggest expense now. And uh, legal uh, fees. Legal fees. Oh, well. Nope. Nope. Number one oh. cost is uh, is uh, health care being provided to the mentally insane, the mentally disturbed, the mentally uh. mental disorders. Oh boy. Really? Sure. Why America not? America has gotten to the point where mental disorders uh. are far and away the single most expensive health care item. That's how far we have fallen. Well, you know, the, the people here, and, and tell me about the Folsom Prison, the, the amount of medicine, I mean, the amount of care and the cost of that care to the, uh, to the prisoners is enormous. I mean, you know, they, I, everything they want, I, everything I used to have a jet, and, and I always had that jet uh, chartered because it defrayed the, uh, the cost of owning the, uh, the airplane. And uh, you know who the, uh, the most frequent charter customer was of the jet and who paid the most for it per hour? Uh, somebody again in the government? Prison system. And that is because if you are a prisoner, you're not only afforded the best possible medical care, you're flown on a private jet to the best hospital there is anywhere in the country for your particular proclivity. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you were in prison for anything other than a drug charge, and if it's a drug charge, I'd just let you out. Uh, but uh, if you're in prison for anything else, uh, you know, rape, murder, pedophilia, whatever it might be, uh, and and you contract a uh, an ailment that requires requires very extensive medical care, you're just going to die. But no, that was they were they would charter the airplane for ungodly amounts of money and have large crews uh, uh, accompany the prisoner yeah. to make certain that prisoner got the best possible. Healthcare. You know, the, uh, the reason I think, you know, I think it's, it's several fold that uh, mental conditions, mental disorders are the leading cause of health care down in America, and it's extraordinarily telling, is because of the fact that, uh, that, that the leading contributor uh, happens to be uh, post traumatic stress syndrome. Uh, there are 650,000 uh, military and vets uh, that claim to have uh, PTSD. And they receive, on average, six thousand dollars a month in compensation, and they receive all manner of drugs and uh, and counsel. And to those that actually have the disorder, uh, the reason they would have it is because the United States has asked them to do things that are insane. You know, our invasion of Iraq was counterproductive; was insane. Our invasion of Afghanistan was insane; was counterproductive. Our bombing of Libya insane. Our dealings with with the Syria, absolutely insane. So if you're asked to do something that's insane and you see people die doing something that is counterproductive, yeah, it's going to have an effect on you. So that is the, uh, uh, it's the largest contributor. But uh, overall, uh, psychiatric drugs and psychiatric care is the single biggest cost in America. That tells you how far we have fallen. We have a wholly dysfunctional Nassama ability to be uh, rational. Uh, you were the one who's already guessed as to what is, that it's related. What is the uh, number one cause of death in America? And it used to be automobile accidents. And then it was uh, heart conditions, and then it was cancer. None. Now the number one, since we have socialized medicine, we've turned our our hospitals into, um, into fledgling post offices. 
Yeah, the number one cause of death in America is mistakes in hospitals. Mistakes. And, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be uh, somebody making a mistake in an operation. I mean, you get all no. these. Oh, no, no. The, 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 you know, the minority of the doctors. Yeah, yeah. yeah the minority of the doctors. Part of so that has to be. Right. The doctors are a, are a tiny minority of it. The problem is the, uh, the health care workers um, are just either, either they're illiterate, they're, uh, they're imp uh, they don't give a, uh, a hoot, whatever it may be. But their, their incompetence, their lack of judgment, uh, is uh, prescribing the wrong medications, not prescribing the correct medications. Whatever it may be, their incompetence is what is the, uh, is now the leading cause of death in America. And wow. it's, been, it's pretty, pretty horrific, isn't it? The combination of those two insights. Hey, did you hear that, uh, that Oklahoma... Uh, uh, yes, I did. The, yeah, yeah, the Republicans. Well, I was amazed. I doubt if anything will come of it. <laughs> yeah, they, they did two things. One is they uh, they passed a resolution that says if you uh, uh, perform an abortion, that you've committed a felony. Now the governor vetoed it. Um, but you know, we we talked about this several shows ago. You know what the uh, the rate is? I won't just say what the rate is per. Uh, 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 for uh, women of, uh, of childbearing age, what percentage of those have an abortion? And the answer is 4%. And in, in countries, which about half the world, a little more than half the world, abortion is legal. And in those countries where abortion is legal, uh, on average, 4% of women have an abortion. You know what percentage of women have an abortion in those countries? There's about 100 of them where abortion is illegal. 50%. 4%. When it's, when it's about the same? No, 4%. 4 okay, so the 4 same. 4%. Okay, I figured there countries more. <laughs> where abortion is legal, 4%, and countries where abortion is illegal. So why would all the protests against abortion uh, be manifest? It's, it has absolutely no, no bearing, factor whatsoever on the number of abortions. By the way, you know that the uh, total number of abortions that have been uh, performed uh, since uh, uh, we began to keep statistics, since abortion became legal and they actually kept statistics on abortion, the average is 60 million per year, and the total now is uh, over 3.5 billion fetuses have been aborted. With just 4%? Oh. Yeah, 4%. Pregnancy, that doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah. Four percent of, uh, of pregnancies are uh, are aborted every year, but that's worldwide. You got a you know you have a population of uh, seven billion, uh, of which uh, three point five billion are women. Uh, about half of those, about one point five billion of them, would be um, of childbearing age, and you have four percent of those who are having oh, abortions per collectively. Year. That, that totals per about year. Uh, yeah, sixty billion a uh, sixty million a year, which is a total. Uh, for the past uh, 50 years, of, uh, of uh, three and a half billion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it, uh, it 50 to 60 four percent billion a year. It adds, it adds up. Yeah, it adds up. Yeah. You know, yeah. 10 years, 60, 60 million a year. 10 years is uh, is 600 billion. You know, 20 years is uh, 1.2 billion. And you know, multiply that by. Two and a half, and you have the number of abortions that have uh, have occurred. We're uh, I, I did a we're I did a little I did an interesting little find here. I'm, I'm sure you probably noted it. You I'm, yeah. Have you ever noticed how Halal Ben Shakar is actually written out with you know the H A Y L A L? Yeah. Hey Lal. Hey, you know yeah. that's the opposite of Yah. Hey, it's the opposite of Yah. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, the and that's of, not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's could yeah, be and, why, uh, you know, they, people the, are bowing uh, down in religion and they're, you know, standing up with Yahweh. Right, he is the yeah. shepherd that would lead in the opposite direction of Yah. Yeah. Because of the uh, the two laments. Yep. Now I got that. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, lol, it would be that you've got uh, two uh, shepherd staffs and uh, and the, the inverse of, uh, of Yahweh. So it's the shepherd who leads in the opposite yeah, way, way from of yeah. God. Yeah. 
Yep. Boy, I tell you what, uh, having um, uh, written Prophet of Doom and coming to know how Satan uses religion to position himself as God, I mean, Allah is Satan. But having done that and then having written Questioning Paul, you get to see that the Lord of Christianity is also Satan. And how Satan is so successful at getting people to worship him as if he were God. And how Satan uses religion to position himself as a God to be worshipped. And it, it's, it's astonishing because most people are totally oblivious to it. Because they uh, they think that, uh, that Satan uh, wants to be worshipped as Satan in some kind of an occultist ceremony. And that is... I can guarantee you the last place that Satan wants to be seen or known is in a uh, sadist, satanic ceremony. He does not want to be known as Satan. He does not want to be known as uh, as ugly or horned or red or as the devil or the adversary. Uh, his whole purpose is to present himself as if he were God. And he does it in such a, a pathetic way. I mean... The religious counterfeits that he's created to position himself as God are so pathetic, so irrational, so ignorant. It's uh, almost as if, because I cannot imagine that Satan is this stupid. It's almost as if Satan is saying, God, you don't, you seem to be fascinated by these, uh, these morons that you created. But I'm going to show you just how stupid they are. I can create religions where... I actually use my own name, where I tell the believers that I have that I have possessed my messengers, and I will uh, corrupt everything that you've said. <laughs> They'll be eat right out of my hand. They'll prefer to worship me as if I was God than they would be to engage in a relationship with you. I'm offering them nothing. I'm lying to them, and here you are telling the truth, offering the entire universe, and at the rate of a, of a million to one, they're going to choose me over you. It's, it's, it's astounding. astounding. It, it, yeah, it's astounding. But, you know, I mean, I had a, a just just kind of a quick, this, this is how bad it gets. I, uh, you know, I put out some pretty anti-religious notes. Right. You know, there's, there's not one aspect of any note I share that's pro-religion. I mean, you know, right. I'm using Yahweh's words. Right. And yeah. I'm using his company. harshest words in, right. in many cases. Yeah. 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 So I get a woman who gets on my page, and she tells me she's learning so much, so much. Mm-hmm. And she starts uh, discussing Yahweh in terms of G-D. Mm. And, and, and she found a Jewish mosque to attend. I said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> There's no such thing. Okay. Well. Wow. I, and I said, let, let me call you. I, I called her, and she went on 100 miles an hour about how the Lord is calling her. And so she's going to take her grandkids to church. And I and said, how well, anybody could read these you. notes I put out right. and, 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 be, and magnate towards <laughs> Jewish <laughs> a Jewish mosque or a church is beyond stupid. Yeah. And that's what you, know what you deal means? with. You know what mosque means in uh, in Arabic? I really don't. I don't. Place of prostration. Yeah, well, yeah I thought that's Place of prostration. And now imagine for a moment a God so insecure, a God so uh, lacking <coughs> that he would, uh, so depraved, that he would create a being to tell him how wonderful he was, create a being that's inferior to him to bow down to him. I mean, the whole concept of prostration to God is, is so incredibly demeaning, so insane right on its face. Well, I mean, who would even want to spend time with him unless you were, you know, just, I'm afraid to die. Well, everybody dies a physical death. I mean, how stupid, you know. Uh, who, would, who would want to? I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to spend an eternity with a monster. Why would you God trust a God who is so insecure, so uh, lacking? that he would create a, uh, an inferior being to worship him. Why would you trust him? I, I wouldn't. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want anything to do. He's a monster. For start- He's That'd be a monster. monster. 
Yeah. Oh, a god that would say, love me or I'm going to torture you forever in hell would be a monster. You know, the, the god of the Quran is a monster. The god of Christianity, of calling Christianity, is a monster. So this, so this, I mean, but the god of those religions is, in fact, Satan. You know, the god of Christianity is not just a monster. He's sort of like a Santa Claus type of monster. Yeah. In other words, I'll give you everything you want, too. Or, <laughs> but you better love if, me. If, if you're, or I'll if you're good, you I'll give you everything you want. If you're not good, I'm going to give you a cold, because that burns. Yeah, Santa Claus. yeah just like yeah, Santa Claus. If you're good. Yeah, whatever you know, that means. Did, did, I don't did even God know what ever good means. once say, if you're good, I will give you uh, uh, a nice gift, Cookies. and if you're bad, I'm going to give you a cold that will burn your britches? No. no and, and by the way... She, she wrote this big thing up after I booted her on her own page about, is this any way to save souls? Yes. You know, my yes. answer yes. to that is, yes. I, I don't even, yes. first of all, I don't even know how to save souls. That's not the business I'm in. I'm in the business of sharing Yahweh's words. That's in the but, business look, I'm in. Yeah, I don't know yeah, how to yeah, save well, souls. Yahweh is in the I business save of, uh, of uh, saving souls. Now, he only saves the, uh, his covenant members, and to become a covenant member, you yeah, have he's in that away from religion. Yeah, that's right. Right. And he is in that business, and he does explain how he goes about uh, doing it. Uh, so, but uh, he is extraordinarily uh, dismissive of those who are religious. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I know I've, I've just finished uh, uh, reviewing uh, Chapter uh, 2, I've, I've, you know, from a... Observations for our time. I've, yeah, um, yeah, I've read it. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've rewritten uh, chapters uh, five, six, and seven, one and two, and now I'm on. Uh, I don't know why I jumped ahead, but I'm on four. Then I'll, I'll double back to three. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, there are multiple places where God just says, "I cannot comprehend the religious. I can't endure being around the religious, and I can't save the religious." Uh, you know, that's. That's pretty indicting. The religion is so moronic. I mean, I don't understand it anymore. God says, I, I, I don't understand it. I have no idea what would cause somebody to be religious. I don't comprehend it. I don't want to understand it. I don't want to be around anybody who is religious. And there is nothing I can do or say to save the religion. So with this woman, which is that any way to save soul, the woman, you say, your soul is salvageable. The reason I, I stopped spending time with you is your soul is not salvageable. It cannot be saved. So, no, I'm not about this booting you. It has nothing to do with saving souls. It just uh, was an absolute waste of my time. You know, until you're I willing to walk away from religion. better spent elsewhere. Absolutely. I need to ask a question. Yeah. If I may. Uh, sure. When you got... When you were, became real, real proficient at translating, and you knew you could trust what you were doing because you've gone through enough lexicons and so forth. Okay, I, I, um, I disagree with both of those two things, but all right. What, 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 well, I, I don't think I'm proficient at that point, you know what and I don't trust what I, uh, I, have, uh, I have doing. I'm well, always I know suspect. Yeah. <laughs> but you felt comfortable enough to write us about it, right? So I've, you, uh, I, so you uh, to, I've I found what okay, God you know, you know so consistent and so right. compelling uh, that I couldn't help but share what I was learning, even as I was in the process of learning it. Now, um, I, when I, I, go, never and claimed, I, I never claimed it. that my translations were uh, were uh, uh, perfect. I, it just no, I'm, that, I'm not even saying they, that. They, I'm they, just saying they, they, make you the they, they make total sense to me. They uh, they're consistent with what God, with His nature, with His plan. And I find them absolutely fascinating. And so, um, uh, you know, I, I, I would say that uh, that they are probably better than any other only because, you know, I approach it in a, in no a way that, tries. Tries. Yeah. Yeah, that no one else even tries, uh, which is that I approach them from I got to know who Yahweh is, I got to know what he's offering, what he expects from uh, us, and, and I approach every statement that he makes in a manner that, that uh, that System. knowing who he is and what he is offering and what he expects in return, uh, let's render this using uh, his words uh, in a manner that is consistent with uh, with his nature and with his proposal. Uh, okay. I figure yeah. it's pretty hard to go pretty hard to go too far astray if you do that. 
Okay, now knowing knowing okay. that, except I'll just it face value. Okay. Right. When you go through and you read stuff, I, like I've been doing a lot lately, uh, and I'm I'm going through these translations and I'm I'm substituting things that I know are wrong, whether it's Yahweh's name or just the simple things, it's not even complicated stuff. You cannot find these guys who translate these, these guys who write these um, lexicons and so forth. It's so obvious that that what we discuss all the time is absolutely 100 percent true, and that that religion is 100 percent false. I mean, it's not even right. it's not even close. And religion how, is false. How is it? I don't know how I, I, I didn't know this. Because it's just irrational. Yeah. But even with a little bit of perspective and a little bit of knowledge of, of what we're doing, you read through this stuff and you say, well, it says exactly that in every every one of these Hebrew words, say two or three that you know are wrong to begin with. Yeah. How can someone yeah. be a translator and write yeah. these things and, and have not seen it? Yeah. You know, one of the things that I have found... Uh, well, it's intentional. We know that. Well, no, it's yeah, intentional. They're it the ones and, that are doing the way, intentional things that people like us. I mean, I have a perspective. I have an axe to grind. I have a, uh, you know, I have. I'm motivated uh, to uh, to convey um, the word of God as I uh, as I know it. Uh, that represents so, His nature. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like so that. I do. But one of the, the comforts that I have in terms of the translations mm -hmm. is that, for example, going through the uh, uh, spent uh, today and yesterday going through my translations of the 91st Psalm. And there are so many specifics in that psalm that were absolutely specific to my experience and that proved to be accurate relative to our relationship and my experience. That you go through that and you and you lay those things out and you say, you know, this is, is God providing 3,000 years in advance, the specific game plan that we would engage in. And so there is <laughs> there is a 0% possibility that the renderings were uh, were incorrect. I, I just have such a hard time that, that you, you read it, and, and that's exactly what it says. I mean, yes. if you just translate the words, that's exactly what it says. It's, it's right. not a... How, how, no, how can they... Then, then when you go to the commentary, uh, occasionally now I'm going to the commentary to see what Christians are talking about, how they interpret these things. Yeah. And I'm going, how the heck do you get there from here? That's not yeah, at all what a, any of these words mean. And yeah. look in your own dead gum lexicons. Yeah, during the time I was writing the first version of Question Paul, I spent a lot of time checking the Christian lexicons. So I want to know how in the world they got there. You know, when, mm -hmm. when Paul made the statement that uh, that the uh, the covenant uh, that is uh, uh, was presented on Mount Sinai was with Hagar and in slaves, mm -hmm. I mean, since it's the absolute opposite of what uh, God said, I want to see how in the world do do Christians deal with that absolute, irrefutable, undeniable lie. Okay. And so I did. I spent a lot of time. Looking at their explanation, I, I just don't anymore. I mean, it's, it, it just doesn't. I just don't care. The only thing I will do on occasion, and I did it in, uh, in a couple of chapters here in observations for a time, to show how Christian publications corrupt the Iowa's testimony. I do occasionally put the New uh, Living Translation or the uh, the King James, and I'll lay it out there and say, this is how they. Uh, they presented the same statement. Uh, how they get there, I can't tell you. But I can tell you that, uh, that you know, uh, well, I won't. I didn't write this in the chapter, but, uh, Larry, I agree with you that it's almost impossible to get uh, there from uh, uh, to Yahweh by reading a, uh, a book with the, uh, the name on the front Bible. The translations no, I, are so bad. It's killed billions of people. They're, they should be yeah, it I mean, that yeah. They're, um, it has. Uh, look, if if uh, if everything uh, that uh, uh, people think, uh, you know, uh, uh, they thought by accident, it would be one thing. Uh, it's pretty clear to me what the, that that it's that it's all been intentional. 
Yeah, and, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, I can read, I don't care if it's, if it's papyrus from the second century, what they witness writings, you know, where we're, we're in modern yard saying anyone that calls me Lord won't be entering the kingdom, you know, or, yeah. or I can, yeah, no one, or, or I can read Lord these, Lord, gonna enter the kingdom of heaven. yeah, or, yeah, or I can read Lord, what they Lord, I don't know you, yeah. Yeah, you but, are Torah, and I could, yeah, I, I, yeah, and then that becomes evil doers, which is a guy that doesn't tithe right. enough, or he goes right. to the bar right. yeah, one night or something like that. Right. Yeah, clearly, yeah. Totally evil doer is whatever I say it is, you know. Uh, it, and then the the other thing is when you go to an Old Testament, uh, you know, which is what they call it in their trashy sun goddess mm -hmm. book, uh, it, it makes no sense at all. And that's got to be intentional too. Uh, well, you know, when you call Yahweh. Uh, God's testimony, and you, you've got this corrupt version of it, oh, and you, yeah. uh, and where you have, in fact, I wrote uh, in the second chapter, I think, uh, is the list of the five things that I, that collectively, in Bibles, were the uh, the worst thing that humankind can do. I mean, first of all, to begin to label the book with Baal, uh, based upon Babel, the the Hebrew word to corrupt and to confuse. I mean, you start there, and then you. Uh, uh, with Babel meaning with the Lord, you then you change Yahweh's name seven thousand times from Yahweh to the Lord, and then you uh, you label his uh, Torah, Nabi, and Mizmor, his Torah, Prophets, and Psalms. You label them an Old Testament, and then you create a New Testament, and you add it to the book that is that uh, half of which is is written by the plague of death. And it's wholly and completely contradictory. And it's the New Testament, and you add that to it. And then you deliberately corrupt the translations. You, you put all those things together, and what you end up with is something that is far more deadly than it is beneficial. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, had, a person, I had a person ask me, how do you know these translations are correct? Okay, I mean, I, I can appreciate yeah. where they're coming from, yeah. uh -huh. and and all they're doing, what they were doing, they're slinging around a KJV and, and a Strong's, and and I'm going to tell right. you that ain't going to make it. It ain't going to no, make it. No, it ain't going to make it. No, it ain't going to make it. And when it, when no. I show, you know, what I do is is uh, you know the translation <laughs> where where you do uh, in in Psalm, uh, the Mizmor one nineteen one sixty four, where it says. You know, Shabba, Shabba, right. during the day, Baha Yom, Halal, right. radiate right. your light. So right. seven is the promise because Shabba and right. means right. promise. Shabba means seven. Seven is the promise right. during the day. Right. I mean, Yom, Yom, everybody's heard of Yom Kippurim, Yom right. Teruah. Right. Uh, you know, that's a day. Uh, right. And Halal means to radiate your light. Then we go down here right. and, and what, what, what does our little uh, Biblia say? Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Well, first of all, the word praise isn't there. Uh, no. We always know they call Sadak righteous, and we always know they right. call Torah laws. All words that aren't even in the actual uh, script. Right. So, you know, why does anybody have to guess whether their uh, Biblia is trash? And why I mean, all you have to do on the King James is to, is to look at it. History. Why did it come into being? It came into being for a specific reason, and that is that King Iam was uh, threatened by the fact that the uh, Geneva Bible had become extraordinarily popular, and that it had footnotes which pointed out the irrefutable conclusion that God's not only opposed to government, that he hasn't authorized anything. The only king that God actually authorized was Dode. There hasn't been one before Dode, nor one after Dode. And uh, and so the King Iams had a connection fit that the Geneva Bible was undermine his claim to have been authorized by God to rule over the people. And so the King Iams, King James Bible, came into existence for a purely political reason. Totally there wasn't perfect. a single Hebrew scholar on the team. There wasn't uh, any access to a Hebrew text. Uh, there was uh, the, the, the product was not a wholesale translation from uh, 
the uh, Textus Receptus or from any other uh, Greek manuscript. The entire project was to revise the Geneva Bible such that it no longer uh, uh, suggested that the king wasn't authorized by God. And so all it is is a revision five times over of a, of a really reckless translation of the Latin Vulgate, which was a translation of the Septuagint uh, and, uh, uh, and the uh, and, and, uh, third century uh, manuscripts. Uh, so, uh, in fact, already translated into Latin. Uh, it has absolutely no credibility. And to say, well, it was authorized. Authorized by whom? Yeah. 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 By authorized man. by whom? One by man him. authorized other men. Right. Yeah, well, no, I, I've actually had people ask me for my credentials. Credentials. Right. Are, are you kidding me? You know, yes. I mean, Yahweh, he, he didn't know Yahusha. These people claim to follow Yahusha, you know, most of my show. No, I know. Yeah. And 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 uh, did, didn't he say these scribes are a bunch of low life pricks? Right. I mean that's what right. he said. And and hey, how what can you say his credentials? What were his credentials? Yeah, he was a stutterer and a sheep herder. What were those credentials? He was a rock slinger and a sheep herder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were Abraham's credentials? He was what were Noah's Babylonia? credentials? They all had the same credential. They were all willing to listen to Yahweh. The only credential they had. Yep. You know, I, I just began uh, rewriting the introduction to the fourth chapter, which is a review of the 91st Psalm. And so when uh, God said, you know, I, I've got a job to do, um, and and I accepted that uh, job, uh, it wasn't because I had any credentials. I had none. I still have none. I mean, the only thing that makes a person valuable in terms of sharing what Yahweh is offering, who he is, what he's offering, what he expects in return, is a willingness to listen to him and to go where the words lead. I mean, that's it. There is no other credential. I mean, I would say, yeah, I have, I have the ultimate credential. So do you guys. Mm-hmm. I'm a member of the covenant. Right. That's the ultimate credential. That is the, the club of clubs, the ultimate fraternity. doesn't get better than that. That's my credential. I'm all hanging that out, and um, and uh, that's uh, that's my credential. I'm a member of the covenant. I don't think you guys have any other. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, I, I, you know, I was I was kind of going through with what the, what what freedom of the Torah is, uh, yeah. you know, last night. Uh, with yeah, most liberating book of the world. Yeah, yeah, and I was explaining that you know the the religious concept. Is that you know you make sacrifices you know you might be paying tithes you're out helping the poor you're doing all this all these sacrifices that are necessary to somehow earn your salvation when we're told not to do the work of the malacca I mean, you know I mean, there, there, there's no way we could anyway but I mean we're told not to yeah uh, just saying, you're not the salvation I'm not in the business of salvation either I'm in fact I am really uninterested in helping not, somebody oh, oh, save their soul I, you know my interest in I, I know Yao. I enjoy his uh, his company. We have a common interest. We enjoy the same thing. Uh, I find it interesting to learn more about him and to share what I've learned. If that isn't good enough for you, then I've got nothing to talk about. I've got nothing to talk about. Yeah, it's nothing to talk about. And that's all that I want to uh, to talk about. I want to say. Here is who he is. This is what he's uh, he's uh, offered. This is what he expects in return. This is what he uh, likes. This is what he dislikes. And uh, you know, if if that's of interest to you, great. You know, he proves his existence. Um, he is worth knowing. Uh, you know, I rather like him. Yeah, and 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 if it's not great, you know, I mean that too. Uh, you know, have at it or don't have at it. Because, you know, that's what free will is all about. There's no commands. There's no lightning bolts being thrown at you. No, the Torah is an extraordinarily liberating uh, document. Um, there's no laws, no obey. And the, the um, poster boy for, uh, for of 
observing the Torah, for being Torah observant, was really a, a flawed individual note. And if so, if a guy that had, in particular, I mean, what, if you if you look at Dode, I mean, he he had lots of hangups. But his biggest thing was, I mean, that that boy had a real thing for women. I mean, he liked the girls. And uh, if uh, if you can be as promiscuous as Dode, and uh, so much so that you're the uh, the first seven kids you have all have different mothers. And it doesn't get much better after that. And, you know, you've got so many women in your harem that you don't even know all their names. And yet God's going to say, you're, you're right, man. You are, you are one righteous dude. Uh, I'm, I am so enamored with you, I'm going to call you beloved. I'm going to, when I return to earth, I'm going to establish my kingdom on earth uh, in the manner that, uh, the, of our relationship. Uh, I don't know how you get more liberating than that. Well, right. I mean, all, all we're doing is is understanding and giving credit due where the credit's due. That's what setting, you know, these days yeah, aside okay. are. They're for the purpose of understanding. They're not for the purposes of worship. They're not for the purposes of a ri religious ritual. They're not for anything but really understanding and giving credit where it's due. You know, and saying, look, I'm smart enough to know that. Well, we, we're but saying credit, that too. credit is due. Well, well, I agree with that. Um, I don't see God, in terms of his children, the covenant, expressing his authority or superiority. No, no, I God. don't either, but, but we do understand the plan. I, know, I, mean, we, I understand that what, what he designed was an extraordinary plan. Ex extraordinarily beneficial, caring, giving, uh, nurturing, beneficial. Um, but even as extraordinary as he is in terms of brilliance, in terms of generosity in the, uh, the plan and what he is offering, um, I see him as extraordinarily approachable, um, down to earth, um, just a, I, I see him more as someone you want to, to spend time with because you share the same, um, you enjoy the same things. I enjoy what he enjoys. So I want to spend time with him. But it's not a, a, in a sense of awe. It's really just a very comfortable, this is my absolute favorite individual in the world. And so I want to spend time because we, we enjoy the same things. So it's, uh, you know, I was just, I was rewriting the, uh, uh, the introduction to, as I said before, and, and when Yahweh yeah, first approached, I had an aversion to authority. I still have an aversion to authority. Well, God's the ultimate authority. I don't have any aversion to Him. And it's because with His children, He doesn't approach His children as an authority. He's really very approachable, comfortable to be around, very friendly. Uh, you know, and He, uh, it's hard to, to put the term humble in association with something as magnificent as God, but he really is, doesn't have an ego. It's pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing, and it's very comfortable, and, and he is uh, very patient with us, and I think, uh, you know, I was babysitting today uh, our uh, little uh, granddaughter, and uh, she's not capable of talking now. Uh, she might, uh, she, I mean, she understands expressions, but she doesn't understand language. And, you know, she can't crawl or, or walk. Uh, so it, she is totally and completely dependent, and you, you, know, you spend all this time, and it's, and it's fun to, uh, to be around her. But you can't have very high expectations. I mean, she's, her uh, attention span is about that of a goldfish. Um, uh, and she you know, she simply responds to very simple kinds of things, like <coughs> expressions and tone of uh, voice. But you know how different really is that between us and Yahweh? And yet he's patient and entertained by it, just as I was entertained to love our little granddaughter. You know, can't wait for the uh, the next uh, experience. Uh, I think it's it's quite similar. Uh, and you know, you can't be view yourself as high and mighty. And enjoy that kind of experience. You really have to, to just re get down to what's important, what's enjoyable. And 
and that explains what's enjoyable and what's important to you. He has something he wants to share, and he wants to share it with us. And he wants to spend time doing the same thing for us as I was doing with my little granddaughter. Now, I think that the gap between myself and a seven-month-old is uh, is much narrower than the gap between us and Yao. But uh, that doesn't stop him from enjoying every moment of it. And ultimately, he's going to narrow that gap. So it is a marvelous. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I, I guess the thing that is so um, perplexing to me is when you consider just how good God is, I mean, just how extraordinary He is, how approachable He is, how generous His offer is, how little He expects of us and how much He's willing to give us, how clear and consistent He's been in His testimony, and how obvious it is that man's alternatives in politics and religion and militarism are counterproductive, irrational, moronic, why is it that for every million people on the earth, only one of those million chooses to accept what Yahweh is offering, and the rest choose to embrace that which is obviously false and counterproductive? Well, you know, you know they have so many physical ideas about it, for one thing, which is really hypocritical. You know, if, you know when you went to churches, you used to hear them talk, well, the Jews were looking for a physical Messiah, and he's a spiritual Messiah, right? I mean, that's what you used to hear. And yet they have to have the zombie Jesus get up and walk. They can't understand, and they're worried about where bodies are buried. And, you know, nonsense like this. I mean, it's the, the ultimate hypocrisy, really. You know, because right. we all know a physical body can't become a spiritual being. I mean, it just, it just cannot happen. It, it's definitely not going to happen. Um, the very premise of Christianity is, uh, is in conflict with reason. But, but you know, we have that whole era of 400 years, 400 years, where not one person on the planet listened to Yahweh. Correct. I mean, we, we should be amazed that one in a million do overall. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, I was looking for someone who couldn't find anyone. And I think it was actually longer than 400 years. Uh, you know, Yahweh clearly had a period of time uh, as Yosha, where he found uh, 12 fellows who were willing to listen to him. And uh, those fellows reached out to others, and there were more who were willing to listen to him. But it didn't take long for the world to go right back to where it was during that 400-year chasm, where I think there was a long period of time, um, from probably around 200 uh, CE to fairly recently, where you'd have to look hard to find anyone who knew it. You, you, you know, and that's what I said. You know, it's astounding that what we're actually doing as a group, you know, putting the words together, sharing the words, uh, getting them out in and, and, and numerous different ways, different people doing it. Um, this has not been done in thousands of years. Thousands no, of years. No. no, it really hasn't been done since uh, Yosha did it. And... Uh, you know, in the early uh, first century CE. I don't think it's I mean, that, isn't that astounding? I mean, it's really kind of astounding to be a part of that. I mean, I'm really... Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm it astounded. Is. Yeah. But I think I we've really all am. predicted. I think we're, well, a lot of the uh, prophecies we've, uh, we've considered um, have it this way. And it is what you would expect. I mean, we're, we're nearing the ultimate decision point. You know, there, there is coming a point where God's going to say, that's it. Everybody's had the opportunity. Uh, I'm not allowing any more choice. You're either on one side or the other. And the only thing that, that Yahweh is actually waiting for, if you can say waiting, I mean, he's not waiting because he's going to return on, uh, on Yom Kippur in year 6,000 Yah. So it's uh, in, in the seventh dimension. That is, uh, that is yesterday just as, as easily as it is tomorrow. I mean, so there's no real patience on his part, but the, the plan that he outlined was designed so that, that he could come full circle, that the people that he chose, uh, the promises that he made to Abraham, to uh, Yishak and, uh, and Jacob, 
that he could honor them. So he is, he, it was essential that there would be some individuals who would collectively band together, who would share in written and audible form what Yahweh had to say about this covenant relationship so that it would be possible for his children to be reconciled unto him uh, prior to his return because those uh, you know, Uda and Yisrael circa 2033 year uh, 5999 Yah uh, they will have had to have uh, done it about faith they will have had to have come to know to uh, to accept and to act upon Yahweh's terms and conditions for the covenant prior to his return or they would be annihilated upon his return mm -hmm. so you have to think well for that to be the case how do they get the information because can you name a time where God said, you know, I'm not going to work through people. What I'm going to do is I'm going to deliver this message all on my own. I'm just going to uh, to stand there, 500 feet tall, uh, and I'm going to be, you know, in blaze orange, right in front of everybody, and I'm not going to convey my message through uh, through humans. I'm just going to, uh, which is the prime directive, I'm not going to work with uh, fellow man. I'm just going to do this on my own. Do you, you find any examples of that? None. None? None. And so uh, it was incumbent upon Yahweh, based upon his style, his nature, his character, his purpose, to, uh, to find someone, find people, individuals, who were willing to listen to it, who were willing to investigate what he had to say and to share it. Because his plan is to uh, reconcile his covenant relationship with Yahuda and Yisrael in year 6,000 Yah, and for that to occur, either God has to deliver that message himself, or he has to have individuals take the time to correctly convey what he has promised, and then to share that in a way that his children can read it. Wow. Those are it. And so we have been offered that distinction, that opportunity. Now, you know, that's not, you know, I, as I wrote in this chapter, because I was I'm rewriting chapter 4, that's not meant to be a, uh, a an honor. It's not a reward. It's not a trophy. It's not something to say, ho, 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 aren't we special? No. The bottom line is that not a one of us is qualified. Not one of us is uh, is perfect. Not one of us uh, has earned or deserves this distinction. The only reason we have it are twofold. No one else was willing, and we were willing. Now that's a, that's a big part of it. Is free will. We were willing. And more importantly, we were um, uh, were also willing to go where his words led, no matter what no matter what things. Yeah, no matter what, no matter what. Yeah, and who cares? I mean, all we were doing was trampling over religious precepts that were lies anyway. Who cares? Who even cares? I mean, really. <laughs> At the time that it began, it was troubling. To me. No, and I think that you. anybody who is new to the covenant, it is troubling to them. It's a bit disorienting. It's a bit isolating. And once you have been there, it becomes liberating and enlightening. And so, you know, you are correct. Now, knowing what we gave up and how foul it is, uh, it's like taking a shower. You know, I, when I take a shower, the dirt that is uh, that I am washing away isn't something that that has any benefit. It's good to be gone. It's good to be uh, to rid of it. That's the same thing about religion and politics. It was good to be uh, to be rid of it. But um, we were given.
given this opportunity because we were not only willing to take it, but we were willing to go where the words led. And as for being willing to share them, I actually don't think there is any other option. We're not compelled to share them. We're not forced to show them. We're, we don't feel an obligation to share them. You just can't help it. I mean, it's just literally, it's, you know, it's like uh, having a child. You, If you're a good parent, you want to share everything you know and have learned and experienced with your child. You know, if you if you find something that is extraordinary, you actually gain, you benefit, you grow, you're enriched by sharing it. So but it may be because you know, it may be because I'm a teacher that I just uh, when you hear something, you go, "Did you know about this?" Because when I read Yada Yada, I'd go around showing them how to spell yellow. Yeah. And, and I couldn't help it. I mean, I didn't do it because it was some place in the other right. that says, go do this. I just said, this is really cool. Did you know this? This is really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Every, everything you learn is exciting. It's, uh, it's cool. It's fun. It's, uh, uh, it's rewarding. It's the, uh, well, you know, the one, of the, thing you do. one of the things I was talking about there is, is uh, you know, we don't have sacrifices to make. He didn't ask for our sacrifice. And not at all. No, I've never <laughs> You know, today, for example, uh, our good friend, Scott, uh, needed to get out of Dodge. You know, there's just some days where you're just not comfortable, and something somebody says, something, who knows what it was. I, I didn't press him on it. But, you know, he said, oh, I'm going to stay here for the uh, the observation show. But, uh, you know, just today, is it's just not a great day. And so what I told Scott is, get out of there. Just go. We'll do it another day. Uh, the... The approach that I think you have to have to what we're doing is if it's not fun, if you don't want to do it because you enjoy doing it, then don't do it. And, you know, and if there's days that, uh, that and there's sometimes there are, life gets in the way and it's a, a burden for whatever reason, do it another day. God, God is not demanding of us. He's not saying, boy, you know, here there was nobody else here. I spent all this time with you. I gave you this opportunity. And, and you're a derelict uh, on the job. No, that's not his approach at all. You know, I spent several hours today playing grandpa. I did not feel guilty that uh, I wasn't completing uh, chapter four. No, it's part of life and part of living. It's, this is not a burdensome job. No, no, it's not. It's actually, it's, it's, it's the best part of life, but... You know, what I was going to say is there's another facet to it. It's not just that we're not required to make sacrifices, because we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> the, 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 not at all. Uh, no. the, the interesting thing to me is that, you know, when we start getting into the dulled implement part of it, you know, the doles, the yeah. Abrahams. Right, and blood, the, dirty, and, 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 and who, whoever. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, the most <laughs> uh, One thing we do know. Uh, what, what, what we do know is that we don't have to be perfect. We can be no. the flawed implement. No. This is no, all the freedom we want like because the, the rest of the world the runs around with a PR man in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you the, know, uh, Yahweh was, you know, Yahweh only has two, uh, two conjugations. Uh, two tenses in the sense of, of, uh, verbs. There's the perfect and the imperfect. And uh, yeah. Yahweh's, Yahweh's entire lexicon is designed to perfect the imperfect. Well, that's to a make good the point. Perfect, perfect. I never thought of that. Yeah, I never right. even thought of that. That's right. right. And, you know, uh, the imperfect says that that's our ongoing nature, our habitual nature. Well, it, the perfect is it's complete and, and totally done. He perfects the imperfect. I mean, just the, the conjugations in Hebrew describe the entire plan. The Torah exists to perfect the imperfect. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, no, that's quite, that's quite an insight, actually. But, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. You know, I, was, yeah. I was constantly you know, struggling with, you know, why were so many things written in the imperfect? And you start imperfect. Well, that means flawed. Well, why would God's ter uh, terminology convey something that's flawed? Imperfect, right? Mm -hmm. And the imperfect is used far more than the perfect in, uh, in Hebrew in terms of shaping the uh, the verbs. 
it just dawned on me, like this last week. <laughs> the whole purpose is to perfect the imperfect. It, it, the Torah was written, the Old Testament was written on behalf of the imperfect to make us perfect. That's the whole purpose of the whole thing. Of course, yeah, there's, yeah, there's like 20 million ways that's, that's that's who he's talking to. That's just another one. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. hearing that. Really? Yeah, that's who he's talking to. Is uh, and and of course, the very fact that there's a perfect and imperfect, and that uh, that almost all human behaviors are written in the imperfect. Uh, I, it tells you that the the Pauline myth. That the Torah is a set of laws, and if you're guilty of violating one of them, you have been condemned by all of them. That's the exact opposite of the uh, of the language itself. And the language says, "No, I'm, I'm writing this to the imperfect for the purpose of perfecting you." That's the astounding. Author. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's an astounding you know, what, insight, and it's something nobody else has ever said. I've never heard this before, but that's right. Didn't even think of it until uh, just this week. But one of the things, you know, when I was a Christian, I would constantly talk about how, you know, the more we give to God, you know, our shovel is just smaller than his shovel. That he always gives us back more than we give to him. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, now that we're part of the covenant, I, re I like to refer to myself as a dented and flawed implement because, uh, you know, it's a dented and flawed implement used, being used in a perfect hand. But I ain't shoveling anything his way. No, no, you're not. You don't have to. I'm not, yeah, there's, I'm there's not nothing. Shoveling anything his way. Yeah. And I don't. Yeah, I, don't I mean, if you were paying a tithe, anything. if you were paying a tithe, you'd be outside the Torah. That's you'd right. be screwing up if you were right. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. God's real clear. I can't can't buy him. Can't buy his uh, his uh, his love. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, tithe was never I'm, money. It was always food. It was in a store. It doesn't exist. That's all I'm offering. Is companionship. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this idea that, you know, when somebody would write and say, I want to thank you for, you know, your dedication and uh, and and uh, all the work that you do in providing these translations, I'm not giving that to God. Uh, God gets absolutely no benefit whatsoever by the time that I spend uh, studying his testimony. I get the benefit. Benefit's mm -hmm. oh, yeah. all mine. Yeah, it's all mine. I mean, you think that he gained something by me telling him what he said? What is he I think missing? He makes him happy. I agree. Well, that's a way to put it. But I think he wants us trumpeting his words. He likes Here's why. But I mean, he he knows. He enjoys it, but is, but is he? Am I giving him anything by uh, by? Uh, uh, Translating and sharing his words. No, I'm not giving him. Yes, words. yes. Uh, yes. In a way, you know, your relationship no. with him grows, and he grows through that relationship. Oh, what? So, well, yes, that's uh, what you that's give. Him. But, but, that's but, relationship. That's it. No, that's that's what, yeah, not just a relationship with you. Yeah, I was it's dealing with the end of the, uh, with of the 91st Psalm, and yeah, but it's and, not uh, just a relationship with you. God was explaining why. God was explaining why. Uh, he uh, he valued me, and, and uh -huh. by the way, you know, we all know the 91st Psalm is written for every one of, of Yahweh's children. Uh, so okay. I'm going to make it personal because it is personal to me. It should be personal to every one of us. And God was uh, explaining why He valued me. And you know what the number one reason why He well, it was two reasons. See, he had, and I'm going to share both reasons. But one of the two reasons is we you, look, you listen things. to Him. You listen no, to we him. enjoyed the same things. Well, okay, yeah. Yeah, he, didn't, he actually didn't say. I mean, he he has two things that he says. Is the reason that he, that he uh, he valued our uh, our relationship, and one of the two is that um, we enjoy the same things. We enjoy learning. We enjoy experiencing things together. So we enjoy the same things. Uh, you know, when you pick your friends, don't you pick your friends based upon common interests? We enjoy the same things. The uh, the second is, and I and I I rewrote this translation because uh, it was important to get the uh, the verb tenses conveyed properly in English, knowing that that I have the full range of opportunities uh, in English because the Hebrew affords you know a, a verb that is not constrained by time. 
And part of it was, and of course this was yada, my shim. So, uh, and and so what I recognized at the time that he shared that with me, I didn't know what his name was. But it, if you write it correctly, it's the other reason that uh, that uh, I was important to to him is that he said he's going to come to know my name. He's going to literally understand and be able to properly convey my name. And then he's going to do it. Now, th that, I mean, God wrote his name 7,000 times in the single most frequently, highly published document of all time. The Torah Prophet of nothing, nothing in human history has been published as frequently as that, and he wrote his name 7,000 times in it. And, uh, and it's, there's only 22 letters, and all four letters in his name are, uh, are vowels, and they are amongst the most common letters in the Hebrew language. You wouldn't think that would be a big deal. But I'm going to tell you, before we came to systematically understand Yada, Yama, there wasn't anybody out there conveying his name. Now there are a bunch of people out there. So you can you know, go online, you'll find hundreds if not thousands of sites with Yahweh. But, uh, you know, that was a big deal. Big deal to God. It was a big enough deal to God that God uh, said, you know, from my perspective, you're important. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, I'm not important among men, but I'm important to God for that reason. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'll take that any day. You know, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean deadly squat to my dog, but uh, it, uh, it, it means something to you. And, you know, um, Larry, you were, um, you were mentioning this before, but I think before we engaged in this uh, endeavor, had you seen anyone, any place you had read, what the specific purpose was of each of the seven steps that uh, comprised the, the Moed Mikra? Or how the no. first four had been uh, fulfilled because they provide the five benefits of the covenant? No, no, not at all. We, I, 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 I met a couple people that understood the first four had been, you know, fulfilled, obviously, but none of them understood uh, uh, the purposes of the first four. I remember you asking me, and I just thought, well, you know, <laughs> you know the. The fall moed is, is designed, uh, you know, to coincide with the fall of man, which is true, and, and that's true. <laughs> no, I agree. That there were, the I, had, I had run across one or two people that said, okay, the first four have been uh, fulfilled. Uh, but they didn't but, know why. But they didn't they know didn't what they know represented. Why. No, they didn't know it think, took away the sting of death, which is what Hosea said. said. He thought represents the doorway to life. Right. I don't think I've read any place else where matzah represents the means to perfect Perfecting it. us. Yeah. Right. So that once we become perfect and immortal, and by the way, they are coterminous. Uh, Pesach is matzah. Matzah is Pesach. On Pesach, one eats matzah. They are coterminous. That once you become perfect and immortal, then you are in a position to be adopted by Yahweh. And once you're adopted into the covenant, God's in a position where he can provide you with the benefits of the covenant, which are to enrich and empower you. Those are the first four mikra. And yeah. Have they been fulfilled in the sense of, yes, Passover, uh, uh, the dress rehearsal for Passover came twice. Abraham on Mount uh, Moriah with uh, Yishak and the, and the uh, sacrificial lamb being, uh, being there. Uh, and Yahweh said, I'll provide this sacrifice. Uh, you know, here's my son. And, uh, and then um, with the Exodus where the religious and political and military institution of Egypt was killing the uh, the children of Israel and enslaving them, and yeah, I was saying, no, I'm going to I'm going to show you the doorway to life. Here it is, and I want to show you the consequence of not participating, uh, availing yourself of this doorway to life. I'm going to kill the firstborn sons of all those who do not participate, who do not avail of themselves of it. And so this is the doorway to life, and and what, and then to realize that that yeast is a fungus, and that Yosha specifically said that that. Uh, what I'm talking about here when, it's, when I'm talking about yeast is political and religious rebellion and that that's what's being removed and how that is what makes us perfect. 
so that we can be uh, firstborn children. I mean, that's what Makuta means, is firstborn children, that we can be the children born into the first family. And then Shavuot is the promise of the Shabbat, the promise of seven, where we are specifically empowered and enriched. I mean, it's a, it is a marvelous presentation. And then you look at the fulfillment of, uh, of Shavuot is exactly when Yahweh revealed the Torah to Moshe. That's when they were at Mount Horeb. You know, seven times seven days after they, uh, they um, left Yeah, that's, a, that's the foreshadowing. That's right. And, and then they had the fulfillment. I, I got a whole note on foreshadowings and fulfillments. That yeah. you, you clearly see all the foreshadowing straight out of Yahweh's words. You see right. all the fulfillments right out of right. Yahweh's words. Yeah. And is, is there any place where uh, Yosha said, you know, this fulfillment of, uh, of Shavuot, we're now going to call Pentecost because, you know, I've, I've decided that I like Greek better than I like uh, Hebrew. And so the... Uh, <laughs> We're, we're going to ignore the fact that I speak of it in Shavuot, and it's the promise of the Shabbat, uh, and my testimony. And we're, we're going to rename it Pentecost. And then, uh, because, you know, I just really love this uh, pagan language of, uh, of Greek. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're saying, you know, it has nothing to do with uh, being in, empowered and enriched. It's going to be the birth of the church. Or did, that when they, uh, when they uh, celebrated the... Uh, uh, Shavuot was instead the benefit of Shavuot that the that those who had availed themselves of Pesach, Matzah, and Bakurim were now empowered and enriched with the testimony of Yahweh so that they could share what they had come to know with the world. Isn't that what, what the, yeah. even the eyewitness accounts say? Yeah. Yeah. No kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, they became the living embodiment of Teruah. Uh, as we are uh, now, the living embodiment of Teruah. Now, uh, so we are literally, in, in my view, we're fulfilling Teruah as we speak. Now, there is a, uh, a another fulfillment of Teruah where, yeah, we will harvest us, but... but we're engaged in the process of Teruah now. And, and I think that the purpose of our Teruah, you get right back to to what are we doing here? <laughs> why why us? What are we accomplishing here? What does Teruah lead to? Yom Kippur, right? Mm-hmm. And what is the purpose of, of Yom Kippur? Reconciliation. Reconcil- with, reconciliation. With whom? Sure. With the family, with with Yehuda and and, and, and Yisara. Right, that is correct. I'm not uh, I'm not um, Jewish. No, I'm not Jewish. I don't think you guys are either. No, not principally. I might have some in me way back, but not that I know of. (laughs) You know, I'm not primarily, but I certainly we were German Jews. Hendrix, my no question about that. All right. So, but the purpose of Yom Kippur is. Yahweh yeah, tells us I mean, uh, on Yom Kippur what's going to happen. He's going to reconcile his relationship with uh, Yisrael and Yahuda. And so the purpose that we're engaged in now of Teruah is to facilitate Yahweh's reconciliation with his children. And I'm here to tell you, God's not willing to do that on his own. God is not willing to, uh, to hover above Yisrael and say, all you numbskulls, it's time that you listen to me, and here's what I have to say. And, you know, I'm going to return on this day, and if you don't figure it out and change allegiances between now and then, you're, uh, you know, you're toast. No, we don't. No, there, no there's a t- I did a thing on free will this week, and I, I said, you know, uh, you know, w- one of the things about uh, calling uh, mitzvah commands, uh, you know, it, you had brought up that uh, you know he's asking you to seriously consider, and I, I, I and right. that's, that's 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 a good insight. So I, I use right. that. But right. I said further than that, nobody has ever thrown lightning bolts at my feet and told me to do anything. Yeah. Hey, have you I'm ever a creature told, of free will. Uh, you, you ever been told that it's your responsibility to read the U.S. tax code? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? Sure. Huh? Yeah. Sure, I got You're three okay, lifetimes. Right. Right. Yeah, right. In fact, uh, you're a yeah, U.S. citizen. Have you ever been told that, that you're in compliance with it? the U.S. Constitution? Well, what what did you, you have to read it? You ever been told uh, that you have to read I, the U.S. Constitution? No, no, I haven't no. actually. No, I've no, never been told you have to read the U.S. Constitution. Right, but you're expected to comply with it, aren't you? That's right. Both. You're you're expected to comply with it. My leaders don't have to. Right. So, but but you've never been given an instruction by your government that you should shamar. Nope. Close to examine uh-huh. carefully consider these uh, these documents. The moment that Yahweh told us that we should shamar Torah, shamar mitzvah, shamar misvot, close to examine and carefully consider, they it it removed them from the from being considered laws. Laws are not to be considered. They're to be followed. Yeah, you right. Mm-hmm. right. You just, that's the law. You right. comply or there's going to be consequences. It has nothing to do, do you, you know, if you go to the, the judge, you know, let's say that you uh, you did not properly obey the uh, the law of, uh, of uh, 25 miles an hour in the school zone and uh, you were going 50. And you go to the judge and you say, you know, judge, I have um, close examined and carefully considered the, uh, the law pertaining to the speed in a, uh, in a school zone, and based upon my analysis of that law and those who compose that law and those that it, uh, it benefits and restricts, it's, it's my interpretation that uh, my going 50 was, uh, was actually a, uh, a reasonable expression of, of my interpretation of that law. How is that going to work for you in front of that judge? Not going to work. <laughs> Not going to work. So I don't care how well you, how closely you've examined or carefully you've considered the law, you're either in violation of it or you're not. No. Yahweh's instructions. Of course, that's why they got to have Shemar obey or Shema obey. They, they have to have it like that because then, then you're obeying a command. You know, I've had people tell me that. I, I had one guy tell me, well, you know, and, and this is, you know, he was, he, he, he was, a, he, he was a subscriber to Dante's Hell. Um, you know, which I find really stupid. Because, you know, how, how do you burn a, 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 a spiritual being? I mean, I, I don't even know how that works. But and, and how you know, can hell be a lightless place? And uh, and you're going to uh, have, fire have fire at the same uh, time. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, but they don't consider that part. Of course, they don't even think that part. But he told me that uh, the reason that there's a hell uh, was was. Uh, how else could, uh, why would we obey Yahweh's commands if he couldn't throw us in hell? I mean, this guy really thought he was part of a, wow. a, a wow. thinking process there. And I said, man, wow. you, yeah, I said, you learn that shit in Sunday school? I mean, really, that's deep, man. Right. Yeah. You, you want to go back to the Baptist church and teach for a while. Yeah. Man, I am inspired by his instructions. I am enlightened by his teaching. I've yeah. grown by uh, by his guidance, um, I um, observe his testimony because I find it rewarding. That's why I do it. You know, a God who would say, "You either obey me, or I'm going to torture you forever in hell," uh, isn't somebody I want to spend any time around. It would be a monster. No oh, clear. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. straight up, straight up, straight monster. up. Yeah. 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 It's amazing that people can't think their way uh, through the process. But, you know, you also look at so many of the other things that uh, uh, we've come up with. I mean, I, uh, I don't think I've read any place where it talks about the five terms and conditions or the five benefits of the covenant. But they're there. They're clear. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're irrefutable. Can I, sure. Can I interject a little thing for mm-hmm. a moment? Um, mm-hmm. Before I met you, I had accumulated uh, probably one of the greatest collections of theological books and things from my grandfather uh, and family. I would get all the books. And and I started about a year prior to running across uh, Yada Yah, I started reading them. I figured, surely God's got to be in there somewhere if I can figure all this out. Yeah. So, so I know it sounds stupid now, but that was my my yeah. go-to. Yeah. So I went I went through all this, and and I'm, I'm I did a pretty good den in all of it. Uh, I read a lot, 
and nothing that you've said for the last 12, 15 minutes uh, is there. No, no. This is, this is, there's not a preacher in America that wouldn't love to have that collection of books I have. The only reason I don't, I don't sell them is I don't want to spread it. It's like spreading right. a disease, you know. So, right. uh, but it's, uh, yeah, I remember when I used to lead Bible studies, the first thing I would do, because you know, the Bible study, you're always uh, talking about Paul's letters. And uh, I had uh, Barclay's commentary, and I would always read the uh, uh several pages of Barclay's commentary and then uh, uh, make the presentation. Oh, man, I was, I was considered to be That's enlightened. And, and, oh, yeah, that was really hot stuff. And, and the sad thing was, as I was presenting it, God, I'm just an absolute fraud. <laughs> what I'm saying here doesn't make any sense. What in the world am I doing? And if these people are just so blown away, impressed, and, oh, my goodness, this is, this is awful. And, you know, you deal with the conflicts and you, you can't explain them, so you just have to whisk them away. For example, uh, how many places have you uh, heard that the reality is that there was no bodily resurrection? That, A, God did not die, and there was no bodily resurrection. And that well, I, no, I think we, 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 uh, that was it. We, that was it. We... Uh, we, you figured that one out, and we've spread that. I mean, I've got three notes on just that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you fulfill three days when you're dead in a tomb, for one thing? You know, going back to right. the cardia, as it was right. written. Right. Yeah, the heart of the land. fulfilling the three Moed Mikra, you can't be dead while you're doing it. And in the right. psalm, it clearly says, you did not give me over to death. And, and, right. and it describes something far worse than being crucified, as a matter of fact. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, why would it, why would the even the eyewitness accounts have my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If in fact God died. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Well, it's very logical. The first time somebody puts it, like, like when you write it for the first time, and and I read it for the first time, you go, uh, wow. It took me about wow. two weeks to say, uh, all right, I'm not going to say Lord anymore, and I'm never going to call myself a Christian. I'm not going to do this. Right. I'm, right. I want Abraham's deal. That was it. Right. You know, in the uh, in these uh, volumes you're writing right now that are that are uh, in opposition to the whore of Babylon, the whore of Babylon and Baal are one and the same. Mm -hmm. And Baal means Lord. That's just what it means. And Satan is the Lord. Yeah. Uh, and it's so obvious. It's amazing that that you know it's all these things we're talking about. Oh, that you know. By the way, that's that's one of the uh, uh, corruptions we were showing that somebody thrown up there in, in UT is that uh, uh, Baal is a symbol for God. And Strong said so. Strong right. says so. Right. Yeah. Well, it is. Uh, it is. Baal is a symbol of the God of Christianity. They're God. The Lord. Yeah, it well, is. Well, yeah, we're a symbol of the God of Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give yeah, them that. It, it, it is that. And, uh, and then you, you, you look at something like the Bible. And, you know, we've always uh, just said, well, Bible is based upon uh, uh uh, Biblos, and Biblos is the uh, is oh, yes. transliteration of the of Biblia, which is the uh, the Egyptian uh, goddess uh, where papyrus was uh, grown, and and it, so to name the book after Biblia, a pagan goddess, is really pretty pathetic. But it was staring us in the face all the time. Yeah, Babel, Babylon, Babel. Oh, and absolutely. All that the, yeah, the sure. Babel, which is the is Hebrew for Babylon. Not only means to corrupt and confuse, which is exactly what they've done to Yahweh Sarah's testimony. They've corrupted it for the purpose of confusing. But that Babel is the most common of all Hebrew um, uh, prepositions. Ba. It means with and in. And Bel is the... Uh, is That was the name. Bel was the absolute... was the name of the Babylonian God. No. And it means Lord. And that here you had Bible in Babel. <laughs> Satan was so in God's face. He said, I'm going to rename your testimony. I'm going to call it with me. And there it was, staring us in the face. It took us a long time to see it. But it was there all along. I, I do have a question for you. I had somebody oh, send sure. this in. 
you know, uh, uh, Yahweh tells us on many occasions he has nothing to do with uh, with the world's leaders. You know, he doesn't even right. know them. Yeah. Right. But well, uh, he's somebody gonna sent He's, he's going to well, know yeah, the sense of, I, I don't yeah, you're going to judge. They're going to be judged. Yeah. Yeah, he he, do, he doesn't know them in a relational sense, uh, in, in a positive relational sense. Right. You know, they put people in charge. I didn't even know them. He says, you know, right. Uh, right. you know, and he, and he points this stuff out on several occasions, so we we yeah. know it's no yeah. accident. You're 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 but, correct. But in Daniel, in a relational sense, he right. and he doesn't even know what they're doing. Uh, but he has his malach for keeping uh, tabs on what they're doing because he's going to have his malach. Right. Uh, try to convict them, right. Yeah, but here's the question. In Daniel 2.2, two, it, 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 yeah, I'm sure you've probably been over this. He changes times and seasons. He dispossesses right. kings and raises others up. Um, I, I'm fairly sure that, that that is not what we're talking about here. He's not putting people in positions of power. So, you know, I mean, I guess... Dispossessing kings, he could have had Dode, you know, wipe out kings, you know, other kingdoms, uh, and he could have raised uh, Dode up. I mean, this might have been on an occasion or two, but uh, this certainly yeah. doesn't mean he's running the political system worldwide, you know. No, uh, Dode is not running a political system worldwide. Now, the Torahless one is definitely going to change the, uh, the times. He's going to impose Christianity. He's going to impose Sunday worship. Uh, mm -hmm. He's going to impose Christmas and Easter and uh, and Christian holidays, and so he's going to do what Rome attempted to do, which is to mandate it worldwide that you uh, acquiesce to, uh, to Christianity. That's that is what he is going to do. So mm -hmm. for when Yahweh returns and he sets up the kingdom of Dode, Yahweh is going to have to change them back. To uh, his original plan, so that we'll be back on uh, Shabbat and back on on Pesach Matzah. Uh, uh, so you I'm, think that's uh, what we're talking about here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. correct. If you, look at Dote, if you look at Dote, um, yeah. uh, Israel at that time uh, was practicing the Babylonian religion, and so. Dode, uh, during the time that, that he was king of Israel, had to turn back the, and replace the Babylonian religious practices, the Babylonian rites and holidays, uh, Sunday worship and, and all that sort of thing. He had to turn it back to Yahweh's original testimony. I mean, God's constantly using shub, turn back, return. And so I think that mm -hmm. you could... You could absolutely use Dode's approach, which was the same as Hezekiah's approach, of returning back to Yahweh's original plan and away from uh, man's plan. I mean, God's constantly saying, to, to come to him, we have to turn around and go in the opposite direction. So, uh, so to change the, uh, the times, if you're Dode, you're changing him back to Yahweh. You're not changing him from Yahweh. You're changing him from the Babylonian practice back to Yahweh. So that's what is, you think. You, you think that's yeah. what that uh, that, that yeah. uh, passage is about. And that, that makes sense. That 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 makes sense because he's yeah. talking about seasons and times as well as kings. Yeah. So yeah, he's obviously yeah okay. Yeah, and, makes and look what Dode did. I mean, Dode replaced the uh, uh, the band chosen king. You know, so um, he he replaced man's system. He replaced uh, the Babylonian religion, and the, and the kingdom of Dode, that is the millennial kingdom, prophetically, is going to do exactly the same thing. Dode's not going to change them to something new. He's going to change them from what man, with the Torahless one, had uh, insisted upon, which religions have established, because all religious artifacts and all religious individuals are going to be pulverized and buried, so uh, we're going to return back to the, the seasons. And it's kind of like when uh, in Yermaya 31, when Yah says, you know, that he's going to renew and reaffirm his covenant. Uh, well, that doesn't mean he's going to create a, a new and different one or change it. It just means that he is uh, going to reaffirm, go right back to the original plan. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's uh, what's being conveyed. God has only got one plan, only got one family, one covenant, one Torah, 
one path to him, one set of, uh, of micrae, only one plant. And there is absolutely no indication whatsoever that he's ever going to vary from it, and that every indication is, every statement that he makes is that he is going to uphold it, that he is trustworthy and reliable because he, he is dependable, because he's not going to change. You know, what, what did we find out when, uh, when Yahweh uh, said, he was talking in, in Chabo, which we'll return to uh, next week, but when he said in Chabo, you know, I'm going to stand upon my requirements. I've, I've established my requirements. I'm going to stand on them. I'm not going to change. So then he says, so I'm going to um, see what he has to say about me. And then he says, because of what he has to say, you know, how would you, why would you expect me to uh, do anything but to, um, to condemn and rebuke him? You know, God's not going to change. He's laid out his plan. He's going to honor his plan. It's a wonderful plan. And it's not just that he has articulated the plan. It's not just that to be dependable, to be reliable, to be trustworthy, he can't change the plan. It's that in this particular plan, God already facilitated it. He paid a hellacious price to enable this plan. You know, it's, uh, it's like if, uh, if uh, Larry, you're living there in Florida. If, um, if I um, donated everything I've ever made in my life, if I donated 100% of my energy and time, if I suffered enormously to enable you to live freely in Florida, and then you said, you know, I think I'm going to move to North Carolina. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do it for? You know, Yahweh came up with this plan. He facilitated yeah. the plan. He's the living embodiment of the plan. I mean, to expect him to say, yeah, well, what the heck, you know, that that uh, crucifixion thing and the, and being flayed alive and going down there. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No big deal. Yeah. Come up with it. You know, if you've got a better plan, you get a different plan, that's okay with me. It's, it's really irrelevant that I did all of that. You know, with 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 a creator, with a creator reaching down into this dimension that he created that has time involved and so forth. <clears throat> you know, uh, going back to what what we had discussed, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, where you know, fourteen point seven billion years is six days, and things are moving right. so fast you couldn't see them. You know, from Right. That you have to diminish and come within that time in in order to view the time, and, and that makes total sense. Now, having said that, I think the reason for you know the, the, this uh, the the crucifixion and the going to Sheol and all that was to draw attention to the fact, hey, buddy, there really is a creator. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, that. The crucifixion, and it really hadn't dawned on me until really now. But first of all, all we were, all, from God's perspective, this was Passover. Now, the yeah. lamb, the Passover lamb, is not crucified. So why crucifixion as the means of sacrificing the uh, the body? Why crucifixion as the means of sacrificing? the body as part of, uh, of Pesach. Why do that? I, I think don't do. No, it's other than very public. You know, well, it's, well, it's, not it's, it's not always not a quick slaughter. So, I mean, just, okay. yeah, yeah, that's not it either. No? That's not it either. I, I've just, it just dawned on me, so I'm, I'm not claiming I'm right here. I'm just going to give you what, what uh, the insight that, uh, that has welled up within me. Okay. What is the, yeah. uh, the, the worst, the, from God's perspective, of all of human history, what's the single worst civilization that has uh, that ever existed? Rome. Rome. Imperial Rome. Rome. Okay. And what did Imperial Rome grow into? The Catholic Church. Okay. Catholic Church. Right. Catholic Church. Right. Rome, yeah. yeah, Christianity, Roman Catholicism. Uh, and does John would say that is the beast that treads upon the whole world? Yes. And doesn't he specifically identify that beast with Babylon, the whore of Babylon, the mother Absolutely. of Harlem, and Absolutely. No question about it. That's okay. what we've been going right. over, the whore well, of religion. What, what form of, uh, of, of killing is, is most synonymous with Crucifixion. Crucifixion. There you, there you go. Yep. You know, it is, uh, 
in Roman Catholicism, man all but kills God. Did away with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tortures him. Mutilates him. Rips uh, they him do kill him. They According do. to them. Yeah, in fact, they, they assemble of the Roman Catholic churches, their crucifix. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, people God. hanging on their cross. So, uh, Meaning they're very God proud. God allowed the, the worst beast in all of humanity, the most satanic, demonic influence on humankind, to perpetrate the, uh, the death of the sacrificial lamb. And it was beyond that, too, and that... Um, the uh, the implement that he was hung on. What is it? What is it most descriptive of? I wouldn't say upright pole. Up, upright upright pole. Well, it's it's upright bar, is, the, is the edom, the upright pole of the of the tabernacle, which enlarges and secures the uh, uh, the uh, Yahweh's home. But it is uh, it is also, you know, when on uh, on Pesach, isn't it the uh, the upright uh, pillars and the uh, and the yeah. lentils that the uh, that the blood is to be sprinkled on that uh, yeah. forms the doorway to? Heaven? Well, yeah, clearly, yeah, that's the doorway. Yeah, we we know. Yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, that that's the so the implement itself is an upright pole. It is uh, it is the uh, synonymous with the doorway to uh, to uh, to heaven. So it is the upright pole of the that secures and enlarges. The, uh, the tabernacle, which is the uh, home of, uh, of Yahweh, uh, that uh, in addition to that, that uh, is synonymous with the very instructions of what would happen on Pesach, but it was the means of death synonymous with the, uh, with the ultimate beast, the very thing that God is saving us from. Christianity. That makes sense to me. So, you know, it's... Uh, um, every aspect of his plan, it's, 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 the details are there. It's, it's why, uh, uh, and we have a, you know, a, a small disagreement on this, uh, JB, but it's a reason why I think it, that we are able, as covenant members, to disagree on the, uh, the timing of Pesach and Martha. Uh, because yeah. it was, because Yosha, uh, wanted to celebrate Pesach with those he loved, with his disciples, to set the example of how you observe Pesach and also be the Pesach lamb. And the only way for him to do that is for it to begin on the uh, at sundown on the 13th day and to continue through what we would call the 14th day. Uh, and, you know, he ate matzah during the process so that it is... Um, it was possible for him to celebrate, observe Pesach as as uh, as one who was observing what Yahweh, celebrating what Yahweh had invited us to do, setting the example, and yet himself serve as the Pesach Lamb. We designed to accommodate that. Now, brilliant in terms of the timing, and it was all established specifically to enable that. And then I think that even the details of of why, for example, this uh, year we've had it. We have a difference in the family as to when we should celebrate Pesach uh, versus, uh, you know, uh, one of, um, essentially full moon versus the other. And I'm convinced that there's a reason that there's no specificity. That the reason there is no description of that it's the uh, it's a renewed light on the moon. A uh, based not on, uh, in, not, not specified if it's astronomical or if it's uh, observational. Uh, both are, are observational, by the way. Um, or if it, uh, how much light has to be on the moon's surface? Does it have to, to, the light have to be renewing prior to the sunset, which, you know, we have a different time. Uh, Hebrew, the day begins at sunset, and, uh, you know, in our current, calendars worldwide, the day uh, begins at, at 12.01 in the middle of the night. So, you know, if you have renewed light on the moon, but it's after sunset, then that can't be the day. You know, so it has to occur before the, uh, the sun sets, but he doesn't specify that. We just have to think it through. Uh, and he never once says that it's the, uh, the 
sunset nearest the uh, the vernal equinox. But he says that you know the the, the time that barley is a beeb and the, uh, the the bloom the blue bloom on the flax that's that's the time that this is going to occur and it's the renewal of the light of the moon. It's coterminous with that. Well, to to have that be consistent, you know, it's going to be the renewed light on the moon that's closest to the the, uh, the spring equinox. But he doesn't provide specificity for a reason. No, he doesn't say what, say what strand of barley, what location no. that barley has to be grown in. Right. Doesn't yeah, say where you're where you look for the uh, the moon. It doesn't say what happens if the sky is uh, if it's cloudy that day. Yeah. What if there's a thunderstorm? For right. Like no provision for that. Right. And by saying to Hezekiah, you yeah, know, uh, we're going to be a couple of weeks late. Is, is that okay with you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we're going to celebrate it uh, a couple of weeks longer. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that there's a reason for that. It's, it's not about the day. I mean, you know, we are uh, uh, so fixated on what day it was. You know, what was what day was he born? When he wasn't born. There's no specificity on the uh, on the day. Don't you know? Don't get tied up on that. If that's not the issue. It's not, not how you observe it. It's not uh, what you do. It's not what day you do it on. Has to do. What is the message? Here? What is being offered? What is being? Ex- what is expected? What is this? What's an invitation? To what? To be called out? To meet with God? It's based on Kara. To read and recite yeah. His testimony. It's an invitation for the purposes of understanding. For the purpose. Right. Right. For the purpose of understanding. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Instead of parroting. Parroting is the purpose in in a, in a church. I mean, it's the, for the purposes of parroting these words that were you know, screwed up. I must say uh, a thousand times that the uh, the means to know him is to listen to what he has to say, to observe his uh, his teaching, his guidance. Chew on it, and think about it. Think about it, yeah, to make the necessary connections so that you understand. And, uh, I, I do have a question before we yeah. go to. I, sure. I do another one. Okay. Uh, I forgot what what was the name of the uh, god of fortune in uh, Yasha Yah. They're always trying to say it was Gad was his name, which is yeah, totally yeah. There is a there is a god named Gad that was the uh, god of uh, of fortune. Uh huh. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, it's just yeah, like, but he had uh, another they, name. They, too. You know, the Canaanite god was El. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's out. Uh, there, I mean, that's just the, there, Yahweh has a, uh, a name. He has several titles. He has one name. Uh, so long as you know his name, share his name, acknowledge his name, understand his name, love his name, reveal his name, acknowledge his name, uh, and you understand his titles. You know, uh, yeah. God is an, is an important title, particularly if you're the real one. Uh, so is Father. So uh, you know, those are uh, the fact is that that Hasatan is not creative. All he does is counterfeit. So the, the things that he's going to do is he's going to establish God by the names that the counterfeit what Yahweh has to offer. And you know, one of the things I was always frustrated about is you know, in trying to to tie you know, like uh, you know we probably all read the uh, the two Babylons uh, Alexander his mm-hmm. love book the two Bal- uh, yeah. Babylons mm-hmm. and he spends an enormous amount of uh, of that book trying to show the uh, the transition from uh, Tammuz for example and how Tammuz. Uh, was the uh, the child of uh, of Nimrod and Samaramis, and and then how Tammuz became uh, Osiris, and how Osiris uh, became um, uh, Dionysus, Dionysus. And how Dionysus yeah. became Bacchus, and then he goes through also the uh, the queens of heavens and mothers of God, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and what my problem with all that was is that. They all had different characteristics, different names, different parents. There was no smooth transition and consistency between.
between them. And I, and I was always frustrated because I wanted to be able to show people that, that Tammuz was the same god as Osiris was the same god as Dionysus was the same god as Bacchus was the, uh, the same god as the Christian Jesus. And, and you really can't do that because their characteristics, their, uh, their lineage, uh, and the, their rights that surround them are all somewhat different. And it just dawned on me the other day as to why that's the case. The more confusing it is, the better it is for Satan. Oh, sure. Satan, yeah, Satan. It's the same ripoff every time, too. They, right. You know, dead yeah. bodies but, in the ground, but, three days. If they get up to the but, dead bodies, walk. Right? Yeah. I mean, but really. The, the more different names and the, and, the, and the more difficult it is to pin it all down and say, well, this is the, the false one, the better it is for Satan. You know, he doesn't care what name you choose to worship him. He doesn't care if you call him Allah. He doesn't care if you call him Jesus. He doesn't care if you call him Buddha. He doesn't care if you call him Dionysus or Bacchus or Osiris or Ra. He doesn't, he doesn't care. It is absolutely meaningless to him what you call him, so long as you uh, are fooled by him and worship him. And so the this migration of names, you know, how... You know, the, for example, the gratia are not a, an absolute duplication of the charities. There are some differences between them. Um, but it doesn't matter. That's the whole purpose of Satan is to confuse. If, if they were all exactly the same going through, uh, through history, then it wouldn't be confusing. You know, it's confusing. Just like, you know, if you were to say, all right, the Christian Jesus is modeled after Dionysus. That's true. Is there, and about 90% of what was said about Dionysus is reflected in the Christian Jesus, but not 100%. You've got to have some confusion in there, otherwise it wouldn't be beguiling. But it doesn't matter as long as I, I take you off the road to another road. Correct. You have to. Yeah, right. So long as I've got a counterfeit that yeah. is... Uh, you'll accept. Uh, right. If you don't like this model, let me give you this one. Right. Yeah, I don't care which model you choose. And I've got a, I've got a religion out there for the insanely stupid. It's called Islam. Uh, I've got uh, one for the insanely <laughs> moronic. It's called Scientology. I've got one there for the uh, egotistical. It's called secular humanism. I've got one for the comatose. It's called Christianity. Uh, you name it. I've, I've got one for you. And you know, and the, the. The edicts of those religions are all designed to distract. I mean, what's the biggest thing about Christianity? It's, uh, it doesn't want you to be promiscuous. And so, you know, they spend all their time on uh, on being opposed to to uh, homosexuality being approved. and, and yeah. being approved. It's just being approved, really, more but than anything. Isn't, just being isn't the most approved. sexually promiscuous person presented in the Torah, Prophets, and Psalms? Don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> Pretty so, much. It, 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 so I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, when, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, Yahweh created Chawa for the benefit of Adam, do you think that he said, you know, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make uh, this uh, this woman really unattractive so that, uh, you know, man won't be bothered by uh, by her at all. She, I'm going to make her really unattractive. Do you think I'm going to make her really attractive because, you know what, I, 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 want, I want Adam to have a good time. You know, it's, God's not not bothered by the things that, that bother religious individuals. It's just well, God. you know, I, I, I did a post. I said, can, can you imagine? Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, I called it, I did it like a Jeopardy. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. stupid religions for 1,000. This, the religion, <laughs> based on forgiving the most heinous crimes you can imagine, loving everybody, no matter what adult, jerk, or murderous animal they are, and right. and, and advancing sexual prudism, <laughs> you know. I mean, you know, and uh, you know. <laughs> can you imagine? I mean, you're outside the Torah on everything, on absolutely everything. You're missing the mark. Right. You're, you're you live in total sin when you walk in a church, right? And and because you have this enormous faith in the unknown, you're a sexual prude. I like that. <laughs> 
prudism. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, prudism. Right. You're the one that yeah. came up with it. Uh, you know, and, <laughs> and, and you forgive anybody, no matter what a animal, jerk, vile, disgusting human being they are, and you love everyone because oh, your yeah, judgment you know, stinks. Imagine having a daughter and having a guy not only rape your daughter, but uh, yeah. kill your son. And yeah, uh, and sure. uh, torture your you wife. Forgive him. And you and you uh, forgive not only him. forgive him, but love him. Oh yeah, yeah. Pray for him and all that shit. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I've no, seen. No. I watch these Who Done It shows. By the way, I saw my daughter on one of them. She she was like an acting bit in one of them the other day. Oh, I'm watching funny. it. Yeah, it is funny. She didn't tell me she was on it. But uh, yeah. It was called, called uh, Murder Comes to Town. She was playing this okay. wife. She didn't do the murder, but they just didn't know if she did it or not. But, uh, okay. you know, the, 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 th the thing of it is, uh, you know, you start thinking about it. Of course, we think of it in terms like that now. You know, think about such a stupid belief system or ethos, I guess. Uh, you know, I mean, really. Uh, uh, let's see, I've got faith in the unknown, I believe real hard, I forgive everyone, I love everyone, and I'm sexually uptight, and God will love me for that. I mean, this is stupid on its face. It's just stupid. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's <laughs> I know it is. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah, why would God, damn if, if God was uh, concerned about that, why didn't he make the top ten list? It didn't make any list at all. It's just, it just no. doesn't even count. You know, and no, even the I don't think it made any list. No, I'm quite certain it didn't make any list. And even even the list where he goes through and says, "Okay, these are sexual perversions," and uh, and really, I um, I advise against incest, and advise against uh, uh, homosexuality, and I'm advising uh, uh, against bestiality. And he's got the you know, the list of things. He says, "You know, this, this is not good. You know, this is just not good uh, behavior." Uh, promiscuity doesn't make a list. Let me make that list. No, I know, I know, I know. And and yet people fall off. You know, they 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 base. I'm telling you, they base a a a good bit of what they believe on just that. I mean, I I told you I was watching one of those one day where the 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 religious woman, uh, they were you know she was somebody that would just stop and pray for you at the drop of a hat. You know, this is how she was described, no matter what. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, so, so uh, her husband's uh, brother comes and lives with them. They end up uh, liking each other, and she goes, "Well, you know, I can't get a divorce, but if he were dead." And so he kills her husband. And every time they went to these church, there were three different church people they went to, and and they said, "Now, yeah, she she kind of set the murder up, but she didn't have sex with him." You know, I mean, they all made this big point, and I was going, "Let's see." She had one brother murder the other brother so she could get rid of him, but she didn't have sex with him. Wow, what a lovely person. What a lovely person. Wow. Ain't that great? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, no, the, uh, the stories I'm reading now, uh, I have a son that goes to a, uh, a Christian university. Uh, he's in his last six months of a uh, of a doctorate program there, and yeah, they're the having a real pro yeah, they're having a real problem with uh, with um, sexual abuse, and the football players are uh, are abusing the coeds, raping them and, and sexually abusing them, and the school is rallying around the football players and is uh, of course, is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, of course, and the, you know media is having a field day and saying, no, wait, but this must be a Christian university. And, uh, and universally now, they are uh, are harassing the, the victims and uh, and protecting the perpetrators. Well, of course. And, uh, and not a single uh, person has come on and said, you know, this reminds me of the Roman Catholic Church, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Harassing the, uh, the victims and uh, rallying around and, and protecting the priests. And Penn yeah. State. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Yeah, in fact, the articles on Penn State are that... Uh, uh, because now there's a, a lawsuit uh, um, where Penn State decided they would sue the insurance company to have the insurance company cough up the $60 million they uh, they gave to the the victims. And uh, in that lawsuit, the testimony has come out that uh, that Joe Paw, uh, Joe Paterno, mm -hmm. absolutely, unequivocally yeah. knew and deliberately 
uh, hit the uh, the knowledge of Sandusky being a pedophile. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, so what's uh, new, right? And, and yet yeah, human institutions, based. academic institutions, you know that one out of every four women that, that, that attends a, uh, an American university is sexually abused during the four years she's there. Are you kidding? No. You know, these are, this is supposed to be the bastion of enlightenment and morality in our society. One out of four. Uh, well, you know, I mean, since I've come to know the truth, what I have come to know is that there's nothing really worth learning being taught at a university. I mean, where are we? Yeah, I think that the uh, sciences are uh, are a worthy uh, endeavor. Um, but uh, well, That's what all my kids uh, did. But, uh, in fact, my yeah. daughter's in her, her doctorate program. You know, I got program, a business degree. I think there's some things that I learned in, uh, in business that were probably somewhat uh, useful, you know, how to read a, uh, a financial statement and balance sheet and to do financial forecasting and that sort of thing. I mean, there's some things that I learned that uh, had some um, some value. But I can tell you that the indoctrination that goes along with it uh, is so counterproductive that I think the value is all set. The indoctrination is just horrific. You know, you watch it today in, in the political spectrum where, where I think it's about 80% of those who are under 30 years old and have uh, uh, received a college degree are voting for a communist. Yeah. Oh, right. the they are, they're going to uh, uh, give one that, to that, Bernie, huh? Yeah. It, you know, that, <laughs> really? That I didn't every know. time a nation has attempted uh, such, you know, you look at, at what happened in, in Russia, 40 million people killed. Mm -hmm. You look at China, 40 million people 60 killed. Million. 60 million. Yeah, some, some say 60 million, yeah. And uh, you look at, uh, at Cambodia. Look what happened. Look what happened in oh, Vietnam. Yeah. Look at, compare North Korea to South Korea. Compare Earth, East Germany to West Germany. And so, uh, you know, if, if you can see that in communism and you can see the countries that are, uh, are Muslim, yeah. why can't you connect the dots? Correct. This is not the system we should copy. Right. I mean, well, no, I mean it's pretty clear that, 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 of course, now, I mean, we don't even have capitalism. we got crony capitalism. And, 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 you know, that's something I'm totally against, but it doesn't matter fascism, because in the end they're fascism, all capitalistic. Fascism, 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 in our economic policy than, uh, than they are. They are communist in terms of their politics, uh, and we are, are communist in terms of our economics. Oh, uh, it's quite a... The, the, I'm sorry, I was going to say, then, then the appeal for Bernie is, is just to forgive my college debt. But, but if I oh, want yeah. to go to school and I expect you to return, I don't worry about that. And, and, of course, and rob the... Uh, the Everything is uh, that the reason that uh, that you don't have a mansion and a fancy car and recreational vehicles is the one percent. And if we just simply rob the one percent, you will all have everything that you wanted, and we'll deprive them, and and uh, the world will be wonderful. That's all you need. Yeah, to do sure, that always the works One percent and everything, yeah. everything will be great. You know, I, I was uh, working in my house the other day, and he says, you know. I, we could resolve the debt if we uh, sold all the public land. I said, oh, really? We already okay. have. So, uh, so let's just say that <laughs> yeah, that we, we already have. have. You're right. Uh, the average American, the average American um, has $250 in savings. Yeah. So the average American wow. isn't going to buy any of your, any of your public yeah. land. Um, now, so who's going to buy it? Uh, China. Okay. So let's just say the Chinese are going to buy it. So uh, sure. how much public land do you think the Chinese are going to buy? <laughs> they can't develop it. They don't want it. But no, I, I don't even think they sell it to them now. They just say, here, take this. Yeah, because because we a trillion? The debt. Yeah, a trillion. You know, the, uh, the Chinese uh, have less than a trillion dollars in T-bills. Are they going to – let's have them trade in a, a, a trillion dollars in T-bills for federal land. Okay, now your your federal debt goes from $20 trillion to $19 trillion. Yeah, the, uh, the, the OPECers have collectively have about a, a trillion dollars in um, in T bills. 
So okay, let's have them trade uh, it for a uh, for some uh, government land. Now you've gone from uh, 19 uh, trillion to 18 trillion. Okay, let's get the rest of the world to. Uh, yeah, well, I know uh, you're doing the to, math is your problem here. So, so oh, let's just say that you say that you yeah, actually got it down that you've got five trillion dollars to buy all of the government's land, and now you've got 15 trillion dollars in debt with the government adding a trillion dollars every year. In other words, you're going further in the wrong direction <laughs> as you're engaged in the process. It's, there is no resolution here. When I, I think when I took. When I took economics in college, the guy stood up and he said, okay, tomorrow everybody gets a million dollars. And everybody yep. went, wow, great, everybody gets a million dollars. And then he says, but then, of course, I walked out to my front steps and I noticed that my paper wasn't there. So I called down the street to Charlie and I said, Charlie, your boy didn't deliver the paper. I'm sure he's, he's got a million, a million dollars. He's a millionaire now. What did he need to deliver that to? <laughs> that, that ain't the solution, guys. I mean, it's just so simple. Right. We have to make sure everybody equal well, doesn't well, make anybody better. He's a millionaire now. Yeah. So well, now you're okay with my pool's not clean. Well, well you, why want to do that? Hey. Well, I need gas for my car. Well, there's nobody working at the gas station. He's a millionaire So, now. So give, it, give me about two weeks, and all, all the people who have the money will be the ambitious ones who go out there and say, okay, I'll do it for you for half a million dollars. Here you go. <laughs> Yeah, you and we're right back to where they are. It's not people that are just and the rest of them are sitting around going counting their money or they can't get anything done for themselves. Can't go to the market. So but I guess not the system well, that ever works. In the market. Nobody knows yeah. truck drivers. Nobody works in the market. Everybody's, yeah. Uh, yeah. What are you going to spend so your money on? Yeah. So, you know, it, it takes a month and everything will be right back the same way it is. <laughs> that is correct, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work. Yeah, so that's not a man. Uh, of course, that's not all right, fellas. Well, we didn't get to uh, Hubba Chuck, but I think we had a, uh, a fun discussion about what it's uh, like to be in the covenant. Mm hmm Well done. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. it. I, I, yeah, I enjoyed I hearing it. And there is a lot of things that we've discussed that, that no one else discuss, discusses yeah. ever. And, and there's things we've uncovered nobody else uncovers. There's truths we've laid out there that nobody else lays out there, and we're yeah. doing something that hasn't been done in thousands yeah. of years. And we are such a small group, it's pathetic. I mean, yeah. it's pathetic. Yeah. And it's amazing yeah. how obvious all these things were. Oh, no, Before how you go away, Terry, Terry was just asking me, uh, are we doing 9 o'clock on Monday, or are we just waiting until next week? No, yeah, nine o'clock on uh, on Monday. I think is when Scott does. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah nine, nine o'clock for you, noon for uh, for me on Monday. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll pick Greg up didn't on, get up uh, at nine on, anymore. On on uh, Chaba Oak. <laughs> uh, well, it's uh, we're about you know, ten or something like that. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's West Coast. I'm East Coast. Um, so um, I know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> uh, we'll we'll just begin with uh, the opening. Um, uh, the second chapter of uh, Chaba Oak, we've gotten to five or six, but we'll just retrace our steps back to Chaba Oak 2-1 and make our way through uh, through it. Not a problem. All right, okay. 9 o'clock on Monday. I'll be there. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Right. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it, you guys. Good night. Good night, Phyllis. Bye-bye.